Hi, this is Stacy from The Advisor, and welcome everybody to our show. Today, I'm very excited because we have Tasos Gotios, and he is here today. He's a health, a holistic coach, and he is here today to share some great um, information. He wants to talk about how to say no, and he wants to go really in depth about this. He he works with people. He helps people with um, work life balance, dealing with stress, and how to live life and in a healthy manner overall. So he's going to tell us a little about himself right now and what he does. And he's going to go right into his topic of choice, which is how to say no. So it's it's a pleasure to have you on the show, Thasos. Tell us a little about yourself and what you do. Yeah, thank you, Stacy. I appreciate uh, also your warm welcome and the intro. Right, so and I'm also excited, you know, to be here with you and being able, you know, to dive into this uh, challenging issue, right, <laughs> of uh, how to say no and why we say yes and not no, <laughs> and uh, yeah, and um, yeah, like, let, let's dive, let's dive deeper into this um, uh, topic right away. Of but before that, since you just asked me, you know, so I'm a, I'm a Greek. I'm of Greek origin, right? This is where I was born and I was raised. And then I'm just living the last 10 years now in Qatar with a family. And I'm a holistic coach. I'm a certified holistic coach with the uh, International uh, Coaching Federation in the U.S., actually. Right? So um, I'm now my heart, uh, heart and mind and passion and passionate about uh, holistic coaching and how to really support and uh, a, a people, you know, to be, to be the best version of themselves, basically through the holistic approach, basically, right. which is the physical, the mental, the emotional, and the spiritual. Yes. So we are addressing all of these different four levels of awareness and well-being uh, through the uh, holistic coaching uh, uh, cooperation we're working uh, close with uh, clients. It's so very important because people, you know, sometimes don't realize, but the mind, the body, and the spirit are all connected. And in order to really, to be able to function properly and to be able to function to our, our, our true potential, we really have to be in line with ourselves and we have to have a clear focus, clarity. We have to understand ourselves as a person and what our wants are, what our needs are. And we really have to understand, um, you know, what our body needs. And, and a lot of times when it comes to saying no, a lot of people feel, um, you know, they, they, they're they worried that someone may reject them if they say no, or they, you know, they, they, they worry that, you know, it's just hard for them because they just don't have the inner strength to, to, to say no, they're scared, you know, they're fearful of it. And a lot of times, if, if you push yourself to do things you really don't want to do, you're actually causing internal stress on yourself, which can, and in turn, can cause other problems. Now, you know, what's your intake about saying no? What do you see a lot in your clients when, uh, do, when they do things that they really don't want to do? You know, what makes them not uh, be able to say no? And what happens when they keep going with the flow and they keep saying yes 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 but in deep down inside it they really don't want to yeah you know first of all just the uh, uh, why were you discussing you just said about going with the flow unfortunately i have to tell you that when you are under this kind of stressful situation like where you you cannot say no and you say yes to everything you're not in a flow you're really stressed you're really stressed and you're really completely not aligned with your true values and with, uh, with your authentic self and with, with who you want to be and what you want to achieve anyway. Right? But coming back to your original question about what triggers them, basically because we're discussing about triggers here. So one trigger, big trigger, for example, is gu uh, the guilt because they feel guilty for, for, um, if they, for example, they feel guilty when they are taking care of themselves. Yes. So when they are taking care of myself, only or when I'm not giving a knife because I grew up with a belief, for example, that I needed to be always a giver and only a giver. Yeah. With, and uh, putting myself as a second or a third priority and always give first priority to others, to my family, to my dad, to my mom, to my peers, my colleagues, whatever. Yes. Then, then I, I, because I was grown up with this belief, I cannot do differently. I cannot understand how to take care of myself. I don't, I cannot uh, be self-aware about yeah. that. And then I don't do anything about 
So one of one, and if I do keep take care of myself, then I feel guilt. Right. Of doing that. So guilt is a big trigger. Another trigger is the fear that you mentioned: fear of rejection, fear of of uh, receiving pushback from the others. Mm -hmm. The fear of uh, resistance, for example, from the others. Yeah. Fear that they may be, not be accepted because acceptance is a big issue as well in our society, unfortunately, which right. starts with the self-acceptance first. First, we need to uh, correct our self-acceptance and then, and then uh, be able to uh, get the appreciation from the others. But this is another topic that we, that we can explore. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And then, of course, sometimes the trigger can be perfectionism because, again, also from uh, from the way we are uh, we um, we are um, uh, we are we we got our uh, let's say our uh, childhood childhood years how we got treated by our parents you know or by our teachers whatever we learn that the only way is to be perfect yes and this is another big trigger you know for uh, the uh, not being able to say no because right. in our lives, when we want to be perfect, when we need to be, if we feel that we need to be perfect, we try to do all things at the perfect way in every detail. Maybe we hesitate in our decisions. Maybe we always want to do what others request from us because yes. they, we think that only if we provide something perfect back to them is right. the only way for them, you know, to be happy or be happy with us and accept us, etc. Another, of course, another trigger could be. Uh, Fear of judgment, right? Fear of judgment, same thing. You know, if I if I don't if I don't deliver something, if I don't adhere to the requests or the demands, yes, or the needs of someone else, then I'm afraid that oh, maybe they will judge me. Maybe they will say, oh, okay, Tassos, you know, is uh, is not a professional. Tassos is not a, a good husband. Tassos is not a good friend. You know, because because of this, of this, of this, because he's not really. Um, attending our needs and he's not really you know following up with a request or whatever <clears throat> so this is this is these are main main uh, triggers right that really cause cause a lot of problems and a lot of challenges to many people on how to say no how does somebody learn how not <laughs> to be a so-called people pleaser because when you're a people pleaser you're always trying to please everybody else say yes to everything and the last person you take care of really is yourself and how do you get out of that bad habit you know what are some of the steps that you can take to yeah. actually turn around mm -hmm. the, thank you for the question there are two ways you either do it reactively or you do it proactively <laughs> <laughs> So if you do it, if you do it reactively, you mean that you, it means that you are in a very deep in the rabbit hole, <laughs> right? <laughs> and you are you have really stressed out yourself. You're really burnt out. You're in mm -hmm. the margin. You're in the verge, the, the verge of let's say of uh, depression or something, or really, really in a, in a bad, uh, in a very low uh, uh, level in your psychology, emotionally and mentally. Yeah. And then you realize, you realize that you need to change that. Mm -hmm. right? So this is the reactive uh, approach. The proactive approach is to start thinking and start discussing with some people that you trust, starting realizing by yourself with your own self-awareness, you know, that yes, I need to change something. This cannot go on because if this goes on, I will get sick, I will get mentally sick, I will get emotionally sick or whatever it, it could be. So proactively, it's always a bit easier, I think, at least. I think that's part of my experience. I think it's yeah. a bit easier, right? Because it's better in, in every aspect of life. It's better to be proactive instead of reactive. Right. right? If, we, if we want to have balance. Yes. Right. Because I'm a big ambassador, you know, of the work-life balance because of the holistic coaching, etc. So it's better to be proactive because in that case, we can really design we can think, we can plan, we can make our, our, our plan, we can uh, get educated in the issue, we yes. can get the support from a coach, from a mentor, from a friend, it doesn't matter, from someone that we trust and can be really objective to us and not just a friend, you know, yeah. we are getting sometimes wrong, sometimes wrong um, information or wrong direction or wrong yes. advice. Right. Right. So it's better to be objective there as much as possible. And then and then we can design our moves. Right. And then we can slowly, slowly start the change. We can slowly start changing the community the way we communicate. 
Yeah. We can start being more and more assertive and more fair in our communication. We can slowly start in saying no to small things. Right. And then to be to, to bigger things, you know. So we need it's a matter it's a, like a conditioning, I would say, like a training. Yeah. You know, it's like every many things in life. So this is this is my, this would be my answer here. You know? Proactively and reactively. If we right. put this into our heads very nicely and very well, then we can judge, we can decide how we want to take this further. Do you feel like a lot of times um, when people have a, a tendency to be afraid to say no, that it reverts back to their childhood years or any type of trauma in their life that that turned their personality around where they they no longer felt confident enough to say no and then they they revert to the fear of rejection or the fear of saying no does it revert back a lot yes of, 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 of course of course it reverts back a lot of times like many other things <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like, like many other things right it's yes. either from our mothers or from <laughs> our fathers exactly or from school or because of the society because someone grew up even in a small society in a, where there were a few people, you know, around him. So this is what they knew. Even our parents, you know, it's, it's, it's a different generation, you know. This is what they know they knew back then. Yes. We should not blame them. We should not accuse them or anything. This is what they knew. Yes. And this is what they were trying to do, hopefully for the best. Right. Because we are, we are talking about the positive case. Yes. Right? Because there are very, very, some negative and some really or violent, even violent environments, but but of course there are the there are the there are these internalized messages that we have received when we are when we were young, when we were children, when we were kids, you know, that maybe sometime now, even now, maybe we're not aware of, right? Or maybe we cannot even remember, we cannot yeah. even ex- externalize because this is so much uh, rooted, so so deep. Yeah. But it's sometimes very difficult, you know, to take them out. So that's why we need a, a process, a step-by-step process to be able to, to become self-aware around them and try to tackle them accordingly. And the societal expectations, of course, right? The second big trigger there of what the, uh, what the society and what the people around us are expecting from us. Yeah. So it could be all the way to a trauma, mm-hmm. but also it could be also a little bit softer. Right. And you know, when it when it happens where where people um, need to really move forward in life, do you do any type of uh, therapy with them, trying to um, strengthen their self worth or their self esteem? Does a lot of people have low low self esteem and low uh, and, and low self worth? Is that re- also related to this issue? It's hundred percent related. It's a very good question. It's hundred percent related to the the self-worth, right? And what we believe about ourselves, whether we are capable uh, to do some things, whether we are capable to uh, stand up, you know, whether, whether we are capable, you know, to express our needs, our desires, our ambitions, our dreams, right? Because uh, unfortunately, fortunately, this is a big factor of keeping us from really expressing uh, and communicating assertively what we need, what we desire. So if we have low self-esteem, low self-worth, yeah, definitely, it's a it's a blockage there. It's a blockage there that we need to work on. So, personally, since you ask me on a personal level, I don't do therapy because I'm not a, I'm not a therapist, right? right? But mm-hmm. I'm a certified coach and certified yes. coach. So through through the dialectic methods, you know, through raising the awareness of questions that go deep, yes, in deep layers, in deep levels, in deep layers, in the awareness in the consciousness of the of each person or its client of mine, then yes. we try to trigger, we try to uh, to get these out, unroot these blockages, so that they yes. see them in front of their face, like being in a mirror, and say, look, I'm in front of a mirror, and I see, yes, I'm, uh, I feel I'm not worthy. I feel I, I'm not able. I feel I'm not pretty. I feel I'm not strong. I feel right. I cannot communicate properly. I feel that I'm embarrassed to go up on stage, for example, to give a presentation or whatever. I have other phobias or fears, you know. So all these, all these can contribute uh, massively, you know, to uh, the, um, the the internal strength, and internal power to say no. Right. So then we need to tackle one by one all these in order to enhance these abilities and turn turn the coin 
<laughs> let's say flip turn the coin upside down and be able to to really strengthen and empower uh, the people and the and the and the, and, um, the coaches, the clients, basically to really to really be able, you know, to uh, communicate as they should. There's a lot of times um, when you when you have a hard time saying no. I would think that all that inner inner emotions, not being able to say no when you, you you keep saying yes, but inside you want to say no, that would cause mood mood changes in a person. Maybe anger issues, maybe outbursts or depression. Can some of those conditions occur from just a simple behavior of not being able to say no? Of course, because they, we, when we cannot express ourselves uh, properly, then we are holding something inside and we're holding a negative energy inside, which creates these blockages. Yes. The more negative energy, because as you know, as I told you, I do also the spiritual aspect. Yes. Of it, right? So whenever, whenever we're holding this negative energy inside us, immediately this turns out to anger or it, gets up, uh, it turns out to uh, depression. Yes. Or turns out to aggressive behavior. Yes. Even aggressive behavior, or or to uh, even you know um, uh, sadness, huge huge um, huge emotional sadness. Let, let's right. say that they really really hold us back and close us more, you know, and then it gets worse and worse. Right. You know, so so that's of course of course this is normal because we are uh, uh, you are we are beings that we need to communicate. We need to communicate with other people. We need to be a part of the society. We need to be part of the family. We need to be valuable at the same time. Yes. Because if we don't feel valuable, then we feel depressed, or we feel angry, or we feel very sad. Yeah. You know, or or we feel um, we feel not worthy about the self worth what, what you were mentioning before. So yeah, definitely, definitely, by swallowing all these emotions uh, does not help us at all. Right. We need to go out and shout. <laughs> and <it's> out loud. <laughs> That's out loud. Yeah, really, honestly, honestly, sometimes it, it's sort of, it's such a relief, you know, to go out, even to cry, either to cry or to shout loud, you know, up. It doesn't matter. We can be somewhere alone, up in the mountain or outside yeah. in the garden or in a park, whatever, or by the beach, you know. Right. And we can and we can cry or we can shout out loud, and this is, can be a big relief, you know, for our nervous system and for our hidden emotions. I agree. I agree totally. You know, that you need an outlet. You need to get those emotions out, I think, because if you hold them inside, the, the situation is just going to worsen. Your condition is going to worsen. Yeah. And, you know, people don't even realize, but when you have all these negative emotions and energies in you, it actually beats down your immune system and it actually can open you up to illness. You know, 70% of illnesses are caused by stress. And, mm -hmm. you know, people don't realize that, but it, it's so important to try to give yourself a, you know, the, you know, stress is always going to be around us no matter what, but it, it's so important to try to be able to cope with stress where you could actually live a healthy and happy, productive life. You know, when, when someone is going through the, uh, the, these things and they're not able to say no, and they're going through all these emotions, what are some of the things that you suggest people do to handle the stress? Now we, we went over some techniques on how to be able to say no. And, you know, since stress is related, what are some things that people can do also to try to work on their stress levels at the same time while they're trying to focus on gaining enough of strength internally to say no? Yes. The number number one is about the self-care. Number one is self-care, 100%. If we don't take care of ourselves or properly, yeah. either physically or mentally or emotionally or spiritually, Right. So if we don't really take care of ourselves properly, we will not will never be able, you know, to have this power to build this internal power to say no. Right. Or we'll never have this resilience that we need in order to cope with these challenging situations in the office, at home, wherever we are, or outside in society. So we really need to take care of ourselves. And we should not feel that taking care of ourselves is selfish. Yes. Because it's not selfish. No. And I will prove this to you very easily. I'm also a dad, right? So as you know, I have two kids, right? So yeah. I do this first, all experiments first in myself. So, <laughs> so, 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 so I'm, I'm the guinea pig. Right? So, <laughs> so when I start, when I started a few years ago, I started doing my Kung Fu exercise practice because I'm a Kung Fu uh, martial artist, right? For the last mm -hmm. week. 
when I started doing this and I started being diligently twice a week with my master, an amazing master that I had in Kung Fu, and I started doing it uh, properly, yes. my energy levels skyrocketed. So yes, my family, with respect to the, the, the time that I had for my training, because I would disappear for one hour and a half, twice a week, yeah. I would disappear to do my training. But then it was uh, when I was coming back and during the week, I had so much energy that I could spend much more, much better and more, and more efficient mm -hmm. with my kids, with my wife, with my friends, with our relatives, because I was giving back so much energy. Yes. If I was not doing this selfish, in brackets, practice yeah. twice a week, I would not have this energy. And then I would be going, come back from uh, the, from home and I would be sitting on the couch watching TV or going right. through my social media accounts or whatever, you know? So we need to take care of ourselves, whatever that means for any or for everyone. Someone may be going to a spa or someone may be taking care of your, of your hair, of your hair, of yeah. his hair, whatever. So for someone may, may mean going out for a romantic dinner. For someone else may mean going for a walk on the beach. It doesn't matter. This can be a hundred different things for taking care of ourselves. But right. we need to do it. We need yes. to do it. And we need to spend this time alone so that we can recharge our batteries and then we can give back also yes. to others that they needed. So this has to be really clear, 100% clear to everyone that being that the, uh, taking care of ourselves is not selfish. Right. Okay, so I think this is one strategy, the first thing that we should start. Yes. Taking, taking care of. The second thing is how to communicate. Yes. And this is the big challenge as well. <laughs> how to communicate. <laughs> Right? Because as we said, fear of rejection, fear of judgment, fear of uh, getting pushed back, fear of rejection, all these kind of small fears here and there, or big fears. Yes. For small or big. So then we need to work on the communication. Right. Communication is definitely key. It's very important. And you need it. Everybody needs it in their life. And a lot of people have a hard time communicating, but that's something that people need to work on. And they could even work on it, you know, spiritually they could work on it through journals i think um mm -hmm. how do you feel about meditation too how, do you like meditation oh, i'm a, an ambassador of meditation because <laughs> of the yes because of my practice my kung fu practice i'm also a qigong practitioner maybe you know qigong is the internal energy yes and the practice of kung fu and it's basically the uh, standing meditation with a combination of breathing and the combination of slow moves like the tai chi more or less yes so it's, it's all these three aspects Standing meditation, slow move, slow movement, and breathing, right? So 100% meditation, mindfulness, 100% mindfulness, being mindful during our day, or even when at work or in the at home. I know it's very hard to do for 24 hours. It's impossible to, to be mindful 24 hours. I know because we are in autopilot and we're having crazy <laughs> lives, of course. We have, but but still, but still, being aware. The, the more often we can be aware that we that we can be mindful, we will be able to manage it. We'll be able to manage maybe in the beginning only one minute, then we'll go two minutes, then three minutes, five minutes, then so slow, slowly every day we can increase our mindful times. Yes. And of course, meditation, mindfulness, then then it's about it, then it's about being present, which is the mindfulness part, being as present as possible, active listening. Yes, active listening with people when we are we are having a we are having a call like the two of us now. When we are being we having an appointment, we have a meeting. When we have an interview, when we have a coaching session, active listening is very very powerful. Yes, and a, a lot of people have struggled with that because a lot of people listen to themselves, but they don't listen to what the other person is saying. And if you don't listen to what the other person is saying your communication between that person is, is not going to be good. Yes, and this is, uh, I can tell you uh, again from experience that uh, uh, if everyone could be trained as a coach, even if not practicing coaching, yes, the skills that you're getting technically and uh, also uh, mentally, the, the skills that you're getting from these are huge. 
And active listening is one of the most powerful skills in our society today, as you as you said correctly, because if you're not listening to the other one, you cannot you cannot be you cannot come into their shoes, so you cannot be empathetic enough. Right. You cannot understand, we cannot understand their needs, you cannot understand their feelings, you cannot understand their emotions, you cannot understand what they may need from you in order to be happy. Right. So, so all this, all this complexity of feelings and emotions and these and, uh, thoughts that we're going through every day, it's, it messes up our lives. Yeah. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there are a lot of people when you go to work, you can't say no. And there are a lot of times when people want to express their disapproval of something or they don't agree with something that someone else is telling them and they're afraid because they're in the workplace. Do you have any suggestions for people? Because we talk about work-life balance, you know, it, yes. when you bring, when you have stress at work, you, you bring it home and vice versa. Sure. And so when you're at work and your, your people are telling you, you know, do this, do that, you might not think it's the right decision. You want to voice your opinion, but you're afraid mm -hmm. to, you're afraid to say no, you know, with the fear, maybe the fear of being fired or maybe the fear of getting in trouble or getting written up or whatever the case may be. Do you have suggestions for people, you know, when it comes to the workplace? Yes, definitely. And uh, also, this is uh, the big issue in the um, in the working environment is, of course, conflict, right? And how to manage conflict Yeah. from what you said, right? Because it's one thing is uh, getting maybe the fear of getting the fire fired or the fear of, uh, of uh, maybe not being involved in some of the important projects, for example, you know, for in a working environment, or, right. but also is how to manage the conflict how to, to be able to uh, manage the conflict situation. So all, part, all this is part of the communication so how you can really be built the assertiveness and build mm -hmm. the uh, firmness that you need when you communicate. So for right. example, one, one technique is when you use the I statement. Right? So the I statement is what? When, you're, when I'm feeling something, I will say to you, for example, you know what, Stacy? right now, I don't feel very comfortable with this discussion of ours. Yes. Can we reschedule our discussion in one hour from now or in two hours from now? Right. This is immediately a small boundary because it's a time boundary. And you also communicate, also you communicate your emotion firmly right. and assertively and write out. So what would be your answer in this case? What can you say? If, we if you were in, it, yeah, I'm telling you, Stacy. I don't feel right now, I don't feel comfortable about this discussion of ours. Can we please reschedule our appointment in one hour from now? I think I would respect that, that you were honest with me and I would try to accommodate you the best I could. Exactly. So it's very, very simple, mm -hmm. very difficult to, to sometimes, you know, to, to, to externalize this. Yes. But very simple because you're not offending anyone. Right. right? You're not, you're not uh, accusing anyone. You're yes. not blaming anyone. You just state what you feel mm -hmm. and what you like to do. So immediately you have set up a time boundary that is not the right time. Right. You have expressed, you have communicated your deep emotion that for some reason, without saying what or who or accusing, right. you don't feel you don't feel uh, a nice nice. You don't feel it's the right time to, yes. to discuss because you don't feel comfortable. That's right. It. And there are so many other examples, you know, in our daily routines and daily environments that we can use these small statements, yes. I statements, beginning with I, expressing on what we believe, on what we think, without accusing, without, accusing, without blaming. Because if I would do the opposite and I would say to you, ah, Stacy, you know what? You are breaking my nerves right now. I cannot look at you at all. <laughs> let's reschedule. <laughs> right? Let's, let's reschedule our appointment in one hour from now. How would you feel? And what would uh, be your reaction be? I, I, would, I would feel a little insulted. I'd probably be a little angered by your, con your comment. And I probably wouldn't be as compliant and as, as nice. I'd probably, I'd probably be a little bit on a snappy side or you know are very annoyed so i wouldn't it wouldn't be a positive interaction you know exactly okay. mm -hmm. so you see with one just for a sentence one sentence with 10 words 10 12 words let's say 15 words yeah problem solved problem solved right exactly 
it's so easy too to rephrase, you know, a couple of sentences or a sentence. And, you know, so many times people don't think and they just say things and it comes out the wrong way and it mm -hmm. can mess up the whole conversation. It could even cause friction between the two people, you know, interacting with one another. If people only took the time to step back for one moment, mm -hmm. think about what they're about to say, and then try to rephrase it in a way that they know is going to work well between the two people. And, you know, you could look at another human and you could understand what type of personality. You might not know them very well, but you ha have an understanding of what type of personality they are. So talk to them with, you know, with in, in a way that you know is going to be positive. And I always say talk to someone with respect and kindness. The two, the two simple words, if we could just be respectful and kind, it would go a long way in any situation. 100% of course of course we need to be respectful and we need to be kind but first we need to be respectful to ourselves and kind yes. to ourselves yeah so then we can be respectful and kind to others yes. because if we are right <laughs> yes if we are because if we are not respectful to our friends our, ourselves and not kind to ourselves right then we cannot unfortunately then we cannot uh, be uh, respectful and kind to the, to the others uh, either yes and another another technique that we because you asked me before on the on a working environment let's say which is the same for a family environment it's the same between them let's say husband and wife it's the, uh, like a problem solving approach so when we are we understand the problem we acknowledge that there is an issue we acknowledge that there is a challenge yes but we're trying that we understand that there is a distance between the opinions of the two people maybe of the two parties it's like a negotiation, a right. negotiation. Where, but we are trying. We see. We show to the other party, to the other person, that we are trying to find solution. Right. That we are trying to be to have a solution based conversation. Yes. And not a problem based conversation. We want to have a common solution that is a win win for both. And we need to meet. We need to try to meet somewhere in between. Yes. So that both needs, both needs of the needs of both persons are met, are being met, and both uh, parties, both people can be happy, you know, and can be, let's say, looking forward to the outcome and the result of this uh, negotiation, cooperation, discussion, whatever it is. So this is we need to have this in mind. Yes. Being respectful, as you said, being kind, using I statement, be be able to approach any issue with this with a solving let's say mentality on how to solve the issue in, yes. in, in, instead of creating more problems or, right. or more conflict yes okay and of course we need to be assertive and firm in our communication be sure confident relaxed yes with with a, with a steady and neutral tone yes when, when we are communicating something to the uh, other people Right. Exactly. Exactly. That's so important. I think, um, you know, how we, we uh, hold ourselves and how we communicate with others. And you made such a good point too, that I really liked is that we really can't show respect and kindness until we, we respect ourselves and we're kind to ourselves. Because if you ever seen in, in, you know, when you see people, sometimes they're very snippy or angry and, and, or they're just mean to others for no apparent reason, it's because they don't respect themselves. It's because they're, they, they're, they're not kind to themselves because they don't feel good about themselves or something happened and they're angry about it, whatever the case may be. But, you know, in order, like you said, in order to show kindness and respect, we really have to work on being kind and respectful to ourselves. And once we've accomplished that, you then you can see, I think, see a total turnaround on how you treat others and how you communicate with others. I think that's a huge impact. What do you think? Yeah, yes, it is. Because, you know, uh, going back to the self-care, self-care is also self-compassion. Yes. Right? So when we are aware and we know and we work with ourselves on self-compassion, yes. that means that they were already working on the self-care with with ourselves and right. that means that we have the self-compassion we have the understanding that we need to accept ourselves as the way we are yes we need to accept ourselves without judgment right we need to accept ourselves with our goods and the bads with our strong with our strengths and with our weaknesses yes and we need to be able to manage all this internally first because if we understand this for ourselves we understand this for the others yes. if i understand that i have weaknesses 
immediately I understand that other people also have weaknesses. Right. If I say to myself that I only have strengths and I am the best and I am the most powerful and I am the, the most beautiful and all this, I will only see the opposite and the negative toward the other people. Right. You know, instead, of, instead of appreciating them, appreciating them for what they have to offer. Exactly. For what they have to contribute, you know, to their surroundings, to the people, to the family, to the society. So self-compassion, yes, is very strong. It's very strong element uh, there, you know, for all of us to be able to really take care of this as well, so that we uh, can really be more grounded, more down to earth, be more, you know, accepting, and accepting also, you know, because we have also inclusion issues in our society now. So <laughs> we have <laughs> inclusivity issues. So we need to to be to be mindful in all this. Uh, yeah. Uh, for sure. Aspects of life. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Now you were saying to me earlier that you actually have a workshop that's going to be soon and you're talking, you're teaching at the workshop how to say no. And mm -hmm. I think that's amazing. Can you tell me a little about that? Yes. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, yes. Uh, I'm running a workshop, the power of saying no and how to uh, communicate our boundaries assertively. Uh, that's on the 30th of March and 31st of March. It's two hours uh, each day. It's actually Saturday and Sunday. Right? And I'm, uh, I'm doing this workshop because I, I, I ran a similar workshop uh, almost a year ago and I see an amazing success, an amazing interest I mean, from people. You know, and I think they got a lot of value out of it. So I'm repeating this now. It's fully online in English. And, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to provide some value, you know, to all the, our listeners and to our, our audience here, because I think this uh, topic is very, very is, um, powerful and very challenging for a lot of people to discuss. Yes, 100%. And if you had to um, emphasize a couple of takeaways from everything that we discussed today, what are some mm -hmm. things you really like the listeners to understand? I think the takeaways, yes, is the self-care, number one. Mm -hmm. Self-compassion, number two. Assertive communication, number three, I would say. And these three will lead us to really be able to take control of our life. Right. Because the final, the final let's say, objective and the end result of all these is that we can take control of our life. Right. And not letting the control to, um, to other people. Right. Not letting the control to our husbands or wives, not letting the control to our bosses or colleagues or peers, yes. not letting the control, you know, to um, what other, um, let's say, relatives or society members in whatever we do. Because taking control of our life is very important because this is the only way to get really aligned with our true self and authentic self and really build for ourselves what, who we want to be. Right. who we want to be and what we want to achieve in, yes. the, in the end, in the long run. Right. And what kind because, of... Because, you know... Uh, go please, please go ahead. No, no, finish, finish. No, I just, I just crossed my mind that, you know, that I think the saddest thing, at least on a personal level, the saddest thing for me and the most disappointing thing would be to reach 80 or 90 or 100 years old and look back and say, oops, my, I lost my life, my life passed. And I never had control. Yeah, I was never, I was never, you know, uh, in a position to decide for myself. Right, I was never in a position, you know, to do things that I would like to do. I was never in a position to teach my kids or my family whatever things that I, they they needed to learn. For example, you see, so this is this is a very deep. This is, I think, for at least for me, this is a very deep. Um, uh, emotional worry <laughs> yeah. that I don't that I don't reach at this uh, at this stage and looking yes. back and being disappointed. So I I, I work practically. <laughs> I think it's really important because you, you don't want to look back and regret. You know, you want to be able to look right. back and be satisfied and happy with the life you led. So it's and really important. Fulfilled. Yeah. And fulfilled. Exactly. Exactly. You know, so I think it's good to be able to look back and to be able to, to say, I am happy with the life I led, you know, and if you have certain things that, you know, you're, you're not too, too happy with, it's never too late to tweak them. You know, it's never too late. It's never too late. 100% it's never too late. 
Now, on your website, you offer a bunch of different services. Can you tell us a little about the services that you offer as a holistic coach? Yeah, so I, if I offer a one-to-one -one, one -one coaching. I offer also group coaching on specific subjects, which I create together with my clients. And I offer a work, different kind of work workshops, and I will be offering even more workshops from now on. And uh, I would be happy to also to offer, you know, a 30-minute uh, free consultation call to all our listeners if we have a wonderful conversation today. And I think I think uh, I would like to offer this to our, our listeners to have this chance, you know, to get in touch with me, get a call. You know, I would be happy to uh, advise them back if, if, uh, if I can, you know, at least uh, create this trigger in their awareness, you know, how they can... Uh, do things differently, you know, to really be happy and fulfilled in what they're doing. That's great. Where can we get in touch with you? What's your website address? So my website is my name, my full name, which is tassoskotzias.com. That, that would spell T-A-S-S-O-S-K-O-T-Z-I-A-S.com. They can find me also in social media and Facebook, Instagram, either as a holistic coach, Tassos, or, uh, or as uh, my full name, uh, Tassos Kotsias again. And uh, I will be happy you know, to uh, get in touch uh, and uh, have uh, fruitful uh, and uh, deep conversations. This has been wonderful. Thank you, Tassos. I love having you on the show today. And everything that you Thank taught you. us today was so valuable. You know, this is something that I hear so many people talk about all the time. And it's the fear of saying no, not being able to say no and always saying yes, but then they, they feel the emotional stress and the negativity that goes along with not going and listening to what they, they, their inner self wants them to do. You know, their mind is saying no, their heart is saying no, their spirit is saying no, but then verbally they're saying yes. And it's, it's, it's hurting them, you know, in many ways. Mm -hmm. And I think you touched a lot of great points today and you gave a lot of great advice on how to start to overcome that. And I think your workshop is, sounds wonderful. I think many people are going to benefit from it. And I really highly suggest that our listeners look into that. If you're suffering from not being able to say no, or maybe not feeling worthy of yourself or struggling with low self-esteem, or you learn, you know, different ways to improve your life, maybe check out you know, Tassos's, um workshop and see if it's for you. And that'll be on your website also, correct? Yes, it is already in my website. Also, we have a special page inside the website so people can find it, can see all the, the sessions, the different sessions, the different the takeaways from the workshop, of course, full information. So everything is there. Oh, great. This is awesome. Thank you so much, Tassos, for being on the show. I really enjoyed this, and I hope to have you back one day soon. And uh, I look forward to maybe talking to you in the future. Thank you, Stacey. Likewise, thank you. It was a great uh, evening for me. <laughs> morning, <laughs> morning, afternoon for you. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> we're in different time zones as well. Yes. But I really, I really enjoyed it and uh, looking forward to, to the future as well. Appreciate yes. it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great thank day. You. Thank you.